Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at CPA questions that deal with stockholders equity, a topic that's covered on the FAR section of the CPA exam, also covered in my intermediate accounting course. Stockholders equity is an important part of the exam. Simply put, if you cannot pass stockholders equity, there's a good chance you may not get that 75% grade. What is the difference between my services, my website, and a CPA prep course. In a CPA prep course, they might spend 40 to 50 minutes talking about stockholders' equity. And let's just say, let's assume an hour. I spend four hours discussing stockholders' equity accounts, giving you examples, showing you how to solve problems. So that's the difference between my website and a review course where they simply review with you the material. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance lectures that deals with all these courses as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe to the channel. If they help you, it, might, it means they might help other people. Share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your, your accounting education or to pass your CPA exam. For example, in, in my intermediate accounting too, I cover stockholders equity very heavily. If you're looking to pass your CPA exam and would like to add 10 to 15 points to secure a passing grade, check out my website. So let's take a look at this question and see if we can answer these questions. Uh, basically, the questions I'm going to be asking you today, I would consider them basic. In other words, you have to know them. Those are basic questions. If you find difficulty, that's why I suggest I'm going to keep suggesting to check out my website because I do have additional resources that could help you. A, common, a company has common stock with a $10 par value and a fair market value of 15 the company exchanged 1,000 shares of this common stock for an acre of land. Okay, let's just kind of visually see what happened. The company gave up 1,000 stocks. Uh, the fair value of each stock is $15. In return, they got a piece of land. Okay, and they don't tell us the piece of land. It's an acre of land, but they don't tell us the value of the land. But they told us the value of the stocks. Now, the question is, the land will be debited for 10000 So what they're asking you is, do you know what journal entry do we have to do when we, if this transaction took place? In other words, they're asking you, how much do you capitalize land? So this is what the entry would look like. We're going to debit land, we're going to credit common stock, and we're going to credit additional paid in capital. This is what the entry would should look like. Debit land for certain amount, credit common stock for the stock issued, and the remainder is paid in capital. So first they're asking us, do we debit land $10,000? That's the first question. Okay. How do we deal with this type of question? How much do we value the land? Well, simply put, you value the land based on the fair value of the asset you gave up. So let's assume you paid. Let's just keep it simple. Let's assume rather than you gave them 1,000 shares of stocks with a fair value of 15, you gave them $20,000. Well, if you gave them $20,000, that's easy. $20,000 equal to $20,000. Here, what you gave them is 1,000 shares of stock. Each stock is $15. What does that mean? It means you gave them $15,000 worth of value. Simply put, the land will be debited at $15,000. So the rule, you need to know the rule. The rule is this. If you are exchanging stock for something else, how do you determine what's the value of the asset or the expense that you are incurring? Well, if you know the fair value of the asset that you are giving up, which we know in this situation, the fair value of each stock is $15, you would use this. Therefore, would the land be debited for $10,000? The answer is no. Once I take out one, I will take out A, I will take out C. All what I have to know now, if two is a correct part of the journal entry or not a correct part of the journal entry, if not, if two, B will be the answer. If not, D is the answer. The common stock account will be credited for $10,000, Yes, it will be credited for 10,000 if we stop here. Yes, we're going to credit common stock for the number of shares times the par value. This is how much you credit common stock, 10,000. And no additional paid in capital will be recorded. That's not true. We have 5,000 additional paid in capital will be recorded. Therefore, the second part of this statement will make answer D, answer B incorrect, which in turn make answer D as the correct answer 
neither one nor two are the correct answer. So this is a basic journal entry. So here you have to know your basic journal entries. You have to know how do we deal with stocks issued for something other than cash. So if you if you issued uh, stocks and you received fifteen thousand dollar in cash, that's easy. You debit cash, credit common stock, credit credit APIC. Here they told you you got the land. So the question is how much do you value the land? This is how you will deal with this question. Again, this topic is covered in my website in detail. Which is correct regarding a cumulative preferred stock? So simply put, do you know what cumulative preferred stock is? That's, that's the question. One, cumulative means if the preferred stock dividend is not declared, it will have to be paid before holders of the common stock can receive any dividend. Is this a correct statement about cumulative stock? Yes, it is. Cumulative means whether it's declared or not, we're still going to have to pay you and we're still going to have to pay you before we pay the, the common stockholder. That's what cumulative is. cumulative is. It's a good thing for the person who's holding the stock. Therefore, I have one. One is a, is a correct statement. So I'll keep A. I will take out B. I'll keep C. Take out D. All what I have to find out now, if two, also a correct statement. If that's the case, C is the answer. If not, a is the answer. The issuing company report a liability on the balance sheet for dividend that are in arrear. Well, what are dividend in arrear? Dividend in arrear are for dividend that's not declared. Basically, we owe them. We owe them the stock. We owe them the dividend, not the stock. We owe them the dividend. So do we consider dividend in arrear as a liability? That's the question. Simply put here what they're asking us, if you owe them preferred dividend, is this a liability? And the answer is no. It's not a liability. You disclose it in the notes, but it's not a liability. Therefore, if it's not a liability, two is out. Once two is out, C is out. We're left with A. So A is the correct answer for this question. Let's take a look at this question. Marco was organized on January 2nd with 50,000 shares authorized, $5 par common stock. During the year 2013, the company had the following capital transaction. January 14, July 28th, and December 5th. So let's see what, what we are being asked. Under US GAAP, how much additional paid in capital is recorded by Marco on January 14th? So on January 14th, we issued those shares, 20,000 shares for $11. The best way to do this is to real quick go through the transaction. Go, I'm sorry, go through the journal entry. Well, if I issued 20,000 shares and I issued each share for $11, this is how much cash I will be receiving, which is cash, we'll have to debit cash. Simply put, first, kind of, if, if you're not comfortable with the, with, the, with the journal entry, make sure you know what the journal entry is. You're gonna debit cash, you're gonna credit common stock for the par value, and you're gonna credit additional paid in capital for the remainder. So si simply put, let's start with this transaction by computing the cash. By computing the cash, we're gonna take 20,000 shares of stocks times $11. Let's take 20,000 times 11, and that's going to give us cash of 220,000. Notice 220,000 is an answer, but that, that's not what they're asking us. They're asking us about this account, additional paid in capital. Okay, so that's, so the 220 is the 20,000 shares times $11. Now, how much do we credit common stock? Make sure you know this by heart. Like, if you don't know how much we credit common stock, it's an issue. How much do we credit common stock? The number of shares times the par value. Number of shares is 20,000 times the par value $5, times the par value of $5. So if we take 20,000 shares, that's how much we issued, times $5, and that's going to give us $100,000. Notice $100,000 is also an answer, but that's not what we are being asked. What we are being asked is the remainder, the additional paid in capital, and usually this number is a plug. So 120, this is a plug, and the answer is D. That's what they're asking us. So you have to be very careful. What are you being asked? I could have asked you about the cash. I could have asked you about the common stock, but they ask about additional paid in capital. Let's take a look at this question. It's the same question, and now we need to take a look at the transaction for that took place on July 28th. On July 28th, we repurchased 5,000 shares at $16. So if we're using the cost method, what do we do? Well, we're going to record the transaction at cost. So assuming the cost method is used, how do we do this? Well, we paid 5,000 uh, uh, for 5,000 shares. We paid $16 per piece. So we're going to debit treasury stock for 80,000, which is 
sixteen dollars per share times five thousand dollar and we're gonna credit obviously cash eighty thousand so what's the question using the cost method how much would they be debit would, would record the treasury stock treasury stock is eighty thousand the answer is b the answer is b so make sure you are comfortable with treasury stock treasury stock is when we buy back our own stock notice here we sold the stock now we sold or issued sold or issued here we purchase back the stock purchased it as treasury stock we purchased back the stock and how much did we purchase we purchased 5,000 shares assume Marco uses the cost method to account for its treasury stock under gap under US gap the entry to record the issuance of 5,000 shares would be what now we went back remember those 5,000 shares we purchased each share at 16 16 is the cost it's very important to keep track of your cost now you turned around and you and you sold them at 19. again what do you have to know here we have to know the journal entry we have to know the journal entries and this is using the cost method i'm going to show you the all the journal entry and also kind of take this opportunity as a learning session for you so what you do is you debit cash you debit cash how much do you debit cash well you sold 5,000 shares at $19 let's find the the amount of cash so we take 9,000 shares times $5 and you would receive cash of 95,000 that's how much cash you would receive you are going to remove the Treasury stock so you're gonna to have to credit Treasury stock since we are using the cost method we're gonna determine how much we purchase the shares we purchase the shares the cost is 16 remember I said this was your cost this is important now so we're gonna remove the Treasury stock at cost and the cost is 80,000 notice here the cost is 80,000 so we're gonna credit the Treasury stock at 80,000 now what's left is 15,000 and that's what they're asking about okay we would include a credit of 15,000 of what a is it a gain on the sale and the amount of 18,000 no way Jose you cannot credit gain for selling and buying your own Treasury stock your own stock therefore a gain is out credit retained earnings no way it's a and B are the same a and B are the same why because if you credit gain it means you're crediting retained earnings so if a is acceptable b should be acceptable okay because if you don't know this make sure you know this because gains into closed into retained earnings so a and b and out so any basic knowledge you're down to 50 50. okay so would you credit treasury stock no i'm not gonna credit treasury stock because um i'm gonna credit treasury stock for cost for eighty thousand because i'm using the cost method d is out well what do I credit I will credit an account called additional paid in capital Treasury stock of 15,000 therefore basically what happened is you you reissued those stocks it's additional paid in capital Treasury stock and the amount is 15,000 as if you're issuing stocks simply put you are reissuing Treasury stock to be more specific now these this these topics what you saw in this recording you know issuing stocks for non-cash so issuing stocks for cash buying back your own treasury stock reselling your treasury stock stock options stock rights stock appreciation all these topics are covered in my, on my website farhatlectures.com intermediate two i strongly suggest you check out the website like this recording share it and for sure stay safe during those coronavirus days good luck